Welcome to Jack 1 to 3 Art Appreciation Unit 5 Lecture. So this is our week 6 lesson. So we're going to talk about art history. Art shows the beauty of the past as history tells us the story of earlier times. It is not just through um, history books where we will be able to learn about our past, our ancestors, but we can also learn about the rich story of our ancestors, the rich story or beauty of our past through art. So learning about prehistoric art is like traveling thousands of years back and giving us opportunities to learn how art was used by our ancestors, how they valued their artworks and how these artworks described or depicted or helped their daily lives. So, Aside from literature, which is also an art, learning about um, art, art or prehistoric art is like traveling, traveling back time. Para tayo magta time travel, kasi at the same time magta travel from country to country. Kasi we're in, we're not just going to talk about ancient history or uh, ancient art rather, but at the same time we will discuss prehistoric art in every in in some countries hindi lahat ng countries so uh, selected lang so in this lesson we will journey back to visit the cave paintings kasi di ba yun naman yung pinakauna cave paintings of prehistoric people during the stone age so we will appreciate the beautiful ornaments that they make using their hands kasi during the during the stone age very limited yung mga tools no um, see how these things were were used. These um, tools were used in their daily activities during the Stone Age. So in this lesson, we will familiarize you, student, with the monumental and architectural structures that is built in Southern England, Egypt, China, and other parts of the world. Of course, we will also explore uh, beautiful artworks found in our own country in the Philippines. So more will be unpacked as we go along this lesson, this unit. So prepare your curiosity and inquisitiveness as we will travel along. So bring your artistic sense and knowledge of history. So this will be our travel guides in our journey to appreciate arts through history. For the topic one, we will be discussing about prehistoric art. So, we will talk about Stone Age. We will talk about archaeological exploration. So, these archaeological explorations reveal that there has been a gradual shift from... Kasi before, nomadic yung lifestyle ng mga tao. When you say nomadic, wala silang permanent place of shelter. But as... As time passes by, early humans learned to settle to a permanent uh, place or they learned to have permanent settlements. And ang pinakaunang settlements nila or mga tinitirahan nila is, of course, aware naman tayo, kaya tinatawag din yung mga early humans as caveman or cave people kasi sa cave sila nakatira. So, the Stone Age, yun yung Doon na nag-start actually yung Stone Age. The Stone Age has witnessed how humans were able to lead more stable, stable lives. And eventually, they come up with permanent shelters and tools for survival. One reason din bakit tinawag siya na Stone Age. Kasi aside from they literally live in a stone kasi nga cave, no? They also use stones as their tools for survival. So, the, to complement this stability and sense of permanence, kasi nga, yun nga, nakatira na sila sa mga caves, they have permanent settlement, early humans also turn to the creation of paintings and sculptures that describes them as early humans, described animals and their natural habitats. So, it would seem that they attempted to record the kind of life that they have during that time through through uh, representing it or through illustrating it on their 
on the wall of their caves, no? Kasi kung, kung mag-research tayo about cave paintings or cave uh, sculptures or cave carvings, most of the subject nila is about daily lives. Makikita doon yung, yung paano sila namumuhay. So, it would seem that there were, uh, yun, central to the representation of early civilizations would be the establishing of possible linkages among art, religion, and life. Now, let us talk about the three stages of Stone Age. Prehistoric period covers the these three periods of Stone Age. So, Stone Age is roughly from 14,000 to 2000 BCE. So, uh, this period includes Paleolithic or Old Stone Age, ito yung pinakauna. Diyan yung nag-start na silang magkaroon ng settlement. Mesolithic, Middle Stone Age, and the, the Neolithic or the New Stone Age. In Paleolithic, Paleolithic, Paleolithic Age, um, the artwork or the Paleolithic art is a product actually of climate change. Kasi, of course, during that time, as the climate get colder, and considering the fact na wala pa silang matinong clothing that time, as part of early human instinct, yan, uh, they tried to look for shelters na uh, mag um, that will provide them with warmth. Na it will give them shelter from the cold weather. So that's the re another reason bakit din sila nagkaroon ng permanent settlement because of the climate change. So, because of that, uh, naging sanctuary or naging shelter nila yung mga caves sa Paleolithic ito, no? So, caves became protective heaven for the early humans. And these caves also uh, paved the way for the birth of their first attempts to create art. Kasi it is, again, through... Uh, the walls of the caves doon sila nagsimulang magpaint, magsulat, or magcarve. Sa uh, Mesolithic naman, it is the med Middle Stone Age. So, Diyan na yung transition from the Early Stone Age up to the New Stone Age. Sa Neolithic Art or New Neolithic Age, diyan na na-develop na yung uh, skills ng mga early humans na mas mas stable pa yung life nila kasi during the Neolithic age diyan na sila natuto mag farm, mag cultivate ng lupa, mag-alaga ng hayop for them to have a living, no? So diyan na sila diyan na nila naisipan na magplant doon sa place nila, mag-alaga ng hayop para may makain sila. So they also have several monumental and architectural structures that built during the Neolithic stage. Kasi, dyan na talaga sila nag-decide na, okay, uh, let us permanently settle on a place. Kasi aside from the fact that it gives the, it give, it gave them shelter from the weather, doon din sila naka-start na, yun, uh, paano mamuhay na hindi palipat-lipat by farming, by cultivating land, and by, by uh, raising animals. So, yun, from Paleolithic, Mesolithic, then Neolithic. Yun yung tatlong period ng Stone Age. So, during the Paleolithic, na-mention nga natin na doon na sila nag-start na manirahan sa mga caves. And doon na din nag-start yung attempt nila na mag-create ng art doon sa mga cave walls. So, one cave painting that can be traced back and na uh, na discover ng mga archaeologist in France itong halls of hall of bulls na makikita sa France so uh, paano ba ito na discover actually na discover itong cave painting na ito because of a two boy that may dalawang bata na hinabol nila yung aso nila then yung aso nila um, pumasok sa isang butas kung saan doon na-stack yung hinahabol niya na bola. So, yung dalawang bata, sinundan nila yung aso. Then, nung sinundan nila, pumasok doon din sila doon sa butas na na-astonish sila doon sa na-discover nila na 
may mga paintings na ganito. Ito actually yung na-discover nila doon sa cave. So, the cave paintings would eventually be called the Hall of Bulls. So, ito siya. So, the figures depicted on the walls were done in a certain level of crisp crispness and on life that there were initial hesitations of the works of authenticity. So, obvious naman siguro kung bakit siya tinawag na Hall of Bulls kasi if you could um, observe yung drawings ay mga bulls o yung mga baka, ganun, na may sungay. So, ito yung pin mga, un mga examples, one of the examples of cave paintings. And this is found in France. Then, during the Neolithic stage naman, na-mention natin na mas naging permanent na sila doon sa mga places nila. And because of that sense of permanence, um, nag-build na sila ng mga architectural, structural, uh, structural, structural, uh, structural objects or mga ganito, architectural structures. So, isa sa mga na-built nila during the Neolithic art or Neolithic age is itong Stonehenge. So, Stonehenge is located, itong picture na ito, itong mga malalaking bato na nakatayo, pinagpatong-patong. It is located in southern England. So, the purpose of this fascinating structure remains a mystery up until today. So, until now, hindi alam ano yung purpose or kung saan ginamit itong architectural structure na ito. So, yung iba, sinasabi nila na it was a temple kung saan doon daw nagkakandak ng rituals, yung mga sinaunang tao. Mga theory lang ito. Yung iba naman, um, interpretation nila is calendar daw yan na ginamit ng mga sinaunang tao para malaman kung ano yung ano yung day or ano yung time by tracking the movement of the sun and the moon. Yun yung theory ng iba. Yung other naman, yung iba naman, um, pinaniniwalaan nila na ano, it is associated to some magical element or some uh, something about magic. So, for whatever purpose this beautiful architectural structure was built on, it still remains as one of the architectural wonders the world has ever seen. So, up until now, buhay pa rin yan. But up until now then, hindi pa rin alam ano yung pinaka-reason kung bakit ito itinayo ng mga Neolithic people. Okay, so as I've mentioned earlier, um, para tayo magta-travel back in time at the same time magta-travel from country to country. So the first stop, our first stop or our first country is we have China. So we will talk about Chinese art. Prehistoric art in China started during the period of 7,500 BCE to 2,000 BCE. So pasok pa rin ito sa Stone Age. It is characterized by a more settled lifestyle based on farming, based on rearing of domesticated animals. And because of this lifestyle, itong pamumuhay nila na pagpo-farm, pagpapalaki ng mga hayop, ito yung nagbigay daan para makag-create sila ng mga crafts katulad ng pottery and weaving. Ano si pottery yung pag paggawa ng paso? And weaving naman is paggawa ng paghahabi. So, tigilan sa sarakta ng samarana na karara. ba? So, sa weaving, pwedeng basket weaving, pwedeng mat weaving. So, ito yung mga pinakaunang craft, art craft ng mga Chinese because of their needs during that time doon sa lifestyle nila ng pagpapafarm at saka pagpapalaki ng mga hayop. So, through arts, for them is functional. Para sa mga Chinese during the Stone Age, ang art ay functional. Artists but artists were able to focus on ornamentation later on. So, habang namamodernize yung mga Chinese, naisipan din nilang gumawa ng art for decorations, for ornament. So, nag-start na, nag na silang gumawa ng mga jewelries, carvings, uh, sculptures sa mga wood at saka sa mga bato. So, other forms evolved in China which capture the richness of Chinese culture. So, if mapapansin natin yung mga yung mga vase, yung mga sculptures nila, mga paintings nila, 
it really shouts or screams Chinese culture. Makikita talaga natin doon. When look at an, an art piece or artwork, may hint talaga doon na makakapagsabi na, ah, this is from China. Kasi very obvious yung mga ornament, yung mga designs nila na very Chinese, no? So, it really shows their culture as Chinese people. So, that is the prehistoric art they have in China. Okay, so our next stop, we have Egypt. So, Egyptian art naman tayo. When we talk about Egypt, of course, hindi mawawala yung pyramid, no? Oo. So, hindi lang actually yung pyramid of Giza or pyramid ng Egypt yung isa sa mga prehistoric art na meron sila. Egyptian prehistoric art can be described as spiritual and religious. Most of their ancient art is directly connected in the in their religion. And I think most of us naman alam yung story about the Pharaoh and Moses, if I'm not mistaken. So, doon natin talaga masasabi na very connected sa religion yung prehistoric art ng Egypt. So, sa Egypt, doon din natin makikita yung mga mummy, di ba? Yung mummy na mga bangkay. Kasi sa Egypt, yung mga libingan ng mga pharaoh, yung mga taong malalaki yung status, estado ng buhay, is masyadong dinidokuratan. Tombs were erected for the pharaohs which shelter them as they journey to the afterlife. Kasi naniniwala sila na madadala nung namatay lahat ng nandoon sa libingan niya. Usually, yung itsura ng libingan nila is um, yun, it is decorated with paintings. And minsan, may mga object or gamit din silang nilalagay dyan. So, nilalagyan nila yan ng mga gamit na gusto nung mga paboritong gamit na gusto nung namatay. Kasi naniniwala sila na madadala yun nung namatay sa kabilang buhay. So, very de- uh, full of decoration, very full of paintings yung tomb or yung libingan ng mga pharaoh ng mga Egypt. And that is a form of art. Ito yung isa sa mga uh, early art, ancient art ng mga Egyptian. Then, of course, hindi mawawala sa Egyptian art itong pyramid. The Great Sphinx of Giza or Pyramid of Giza. The pyramids were constructed, alam naman natin, by workers who painstakingly moved huge stones and materials para ma-insure na excellent quality yung magiging uh, output ng pyramid. So, alam naman natin lahat yung story behind the pyramid that can be uh, seen doon sa story ni Fer so, so tigilan so pera ang nausumusa so yun maraming napagod or maraming uh, naghirap para mapa- magawa itong mga pyramids na ito for the sake of the Pharaoh so ito isa talaga to sa pinaka wonders of the world and consider this as a pinaka magagandang artworks or ancient art ng mga Egyptian And we also have in Egyptian art, yung tinatawag nila na palette of King Namor. So, kung mapapansin natin, hindi siya simpleng palette lang. May mga carvings siya. And yung mga carvings na yan, bawat uh, image or illustration dyan ay merong meaning, merong representation. So, it is a very uh, important art piece din sa mga Egyptian. The palette of King Narmer. Then, we have, of course, our very own art. Our very own prehistoric or ancient art. So, in the Philippines, one of uh, the earliest art work that is found is the Manunggul Jar. It is actually a burial jar. Libingan siya. Siguro, gikrimate, nilagay dyan, or hindi, ko, hindi ako sure sa size ng jar. 
I'm not sure if magkasya ba dyan yung tao, no? So, this jar is found in Palawan during the New Stone Age, New Lethic. And it represents actually the artistry and the understanding of early Filipinos about their belief in the journey that the soul travels. Kasi yung mga early Filipino, naniniwala sila na nagtatravel yung, yung soul ng tao from life to death or yung, yung concept ng kabilang buhay. And as you could uh, observe, yung lid, yung takip ng jar is designed with ano, may dalawang uh, human figures na namamangka and that actually symbolizes yung journey nung namatay from life to death. Hiniwala sila na yun yung yan yung magdadala or it will serve as their the uh, dead's uh, one ba yung soul nung namatay magte-travel sa kabilang buhay so yun yung representation niya yung dalawang uh, human figure na namamangka kasi tatawid daw sila from life to death sa kabilang buhay so ito yung manung gold jar is is sa earliest known na artwork ng mga Filipino. Another oldest known works of art from Philippines, prehistoric art, is the Angono Petroglyphs. So, ito yung Petroglyphs, uh, the Angono Petroglyphs na makikita sa Luzon, sa Rizal province. A Petroglyph is an engraving in a rock face. So, engravement, uh, it is, ano, parang writings siya na naka-engrave sa isang bato. So, it can be found all over the world and represents the world of prehistoric peoples. So, ito yung sa Philippines na makikita sa Angono Rizal. The Angono Petroglyphs. So, maraming pwedeng maging reason or maraming pwedeng maging representation itong, itong petro, uh, petroglyphs na ito. Kasi pwede rin siyang gawing, uh, sa, uh, tawagin petrograph. So, yun. The Manung Gold Jar and this Angono Petroglyphs, ito yung un, uh, dalawang artworks na makukonsider natin na belong sa prehistoric art ng Philippines. Then, let us move or let us travel to Greece and let us talk about the prehistoric Greek art. During the prehistoric art of Greece, or the Greek prehistoric art, ang um, pinaka-focus or highlight ng mga artworks nila is sculptures, no? So, punong-puno sila ng mga figures, mga statues na usually uh, nude na mga statues, mga walang damit na statues. So, ito actually mga sculptures ng mga gods and mga goddesses na pinapaniwalaan nila. So, during the prehistoric art, Greek art, the human body became the emphasis of their art or during this period. So, yun, it shows, um, it shows how they really uh, worship their gods and goddesses by creating sculptures na minsan very human-like, na parang totoo siya because of its details, fine details. So, at saka minsan, ay hindi minsan, usually yung mga sculptures nila is masyadong malalaki or very human size. So, later on, the Greek period, it showed figures of human with minimal clothing. So, before, nung una, nude talaga, as in walang saplot yung mga statues nila, as in makikita lahat. If you could still remember uh, Michelangelo's David na sculpture na wala talagang saplot. But later on, naging ano na, nagkaroon na unti-unti ng mga damit yung mga human statues or human figures ng Greek art. Then in architecture naman, ancient Greek temples consist of these three architecture orders. Itong Corinthian, Ionic, and Doric orders. Ito yung, para column siya actually. Ay, column, I mean, oh, posti siya. Yun, column posti siya na uh, decorated and this is this uh, decoration kind of 
architectural decoration actually started or originated in Greece, in ancient Greece. Uh, isa sa mga ano, important um, Greek architectural work is itong Parthenon. So, the Parthenon ranks among the masterpieces of world architecture. It has monumental entrance and it is best represented by the famous gateway to the Athenian Acropolis. So, this actually served as temple and it is dedicated to the deity, the goddess Athena. So, ito, the reason uh, behind this Parthenon is that it served as temple doon sa mga nag-worship kay Athena. And as you can see, uh, present dito yung yung architectural orders na yung Dorica, Ionica, tsaka Corinthian na column. So, isa ito sa considered na masterpieces in the field of architecture. And lastly, we have the Roman art. So, the Romans' important contribution to the development of architecture are its structural engineering. So, particularly in developing concrete reinforced by embedded bricks, arcs, and powerful materials for creating new vaults. So, ang focus naman ng Roman, Roman art is on architecture, on structure, structural so, these were the flexible growing vault and the dome. Engineering design, planning cities, creating balanced layout of the great civic centers, cold forums. So, pinaka-important na artwork ng Roman art during prehistoric period is the Colosseum. Ito ang makikita natin sa picture na ito. Na up until now is existing, and up until now is part of the most uh, visited tourist spot in Rome. And that's it. That ends the topic one for this unit. See you in the next topic.